The home I grew up in seemed like your typical Christian family from the outside. So I pretty much always uh, remember <clears throat> knowing God. I always remember loving Him, but my life inside our home was very different from what people knew or expected. My home life was very chaotic and there was a lot of yelling, verbal and physical abuse, as well as I was sexually abused by two different guys up until about the age of 13. I somehow felt like it was my fault. I didn't know it then, but I would carried around this view of myself that I wasn't really worth being treated well, so people didn't treat me well, they treated me badly. Uh, while I was at school, I had two guys in my class who had sexually harassed me, and then later on, uh, I was sexually harassed with a few other girls in my class by our driver's ed teacher. Uh, people who knew me saw me on the outside like I was a pretty normal teenager. I was popular, I was a straight-A student, I was happy, I was funny, uh, but I got really good at hiding what I was going through. And I had had several suicide attempts that ended up getting me sent into an adolescent psychiatric hospital, cutting and eating disorder, I had abused drugs and alcohol, uh, I had smoked cigarettes since I was like 12 years old. After I graduated, my uh, cousin had told me about Elam Bible Institute, and I kind of just thought that I would go to Elam as a way to escape from my life. My freshman year, my friend and my sister and I decided to go to New York City for New Year's. One of the guys sexually assaulted me while he was attempting to rape me at the party we were at. I felt like I was trying to get my life together. I felt like I was going to a Bible school. I was doing everything right. And yet again, I was having something like this happen to me. I'd always had this thought go through my mind that said, of course this is happening to me. This kind of stuff always happens. My struggle with my eating had gotten really bad, so I was told about this program called Mercy Ministries. It's a Christian program for girls with life-controlling issues, and I went into the program and graduated eight months later. Once I had gotten on my own two feet, I had my own apartment uh, in Henrietta. The apartment complex over a six-month period had someone setting cars on fire. My car was the first car that was set on fire. After that had happened, some good friends of mine allowed me to borrow one of their cars, and the one that I was borrowing was one of them. Again, I had another one of those moments where in my head I was saying, of course this is happening. Uh, there was times when I, I couldn't even read my Bible. I would just hold my Bible and at nights would be crying with my tears falling on the pages. God had really began to show me a lot, a new perspective on who He was, on who I was to Him. I had to walk through forgiveness towards all of the people who had hurt and abused me, as well as I had to forgive myself for the situations that I had willingly put myself into. I had walked through forgiveness towards God for allowing all of this horrible stuff to keep happening to me. Uh, since then, the circumstances of my life have dramatically changed. God's healed me from so much. He's healed me from all of my addictions. He's healed me from all of the mental illnesses that I struggled with in my past. Uh, he's healed me of pretty much all of my wounds that I never would have thought would have been possible at all. Uh, there's been incredible reconciliation with members of my family that at times seemed impossible. Uh, and here I am, I'm 28, I'm married to an incredible man who's loved me like no other man ever has. We have two amazing kids. Life still has its uh, twists and turns. There's still curveballs thrown at me and things that are hard, but I know that I just have to keep walking forward. The victim mindset is one that is my weakness and I know that I struggle with. Uh, still to this day, I struggle with it and I just have to press forward. I have to stand on God's promises. Uh, Hosea 2.15 says, I will give her back her vineyards and her valley of trouble will be her door of hope. My story is not over yet. Uh, God's still got plans for me, but I live each day trying to love God and share with others everything that God shared with me. My name is Katherine Hagstrom, and I am second.